Her. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And I just need to talk. Can we meet? Me. No. I'm really sorry for your grandmother, but I can't help you. Her. I just need to talk. I'm really sorry for everything. Please let me see you again. Me. No. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post. Guys, I'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out. But you guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, X 24 year old female cheated on me, 26 year old male. I went no contact. Good. Now her grandmother is dying and she wants me to talk to her. Huh. <laughs> I dated this girl for one year and everything was great. Great chemistry, rapport, and good sex. I really cared about her. During that time, she told me about her ex who treated her very badly and who she used to love a lot. Red flag. He ended their relationship. Red flag. And she later found out he tried to cheat on her. The other girl told her. He probably did it anyways with other girls. He is a scumbag from what she told me. She had a very turbulent family history because of her drug addict stepfather, real father left at birth, which used to regularly beat her and her mom and would sometimes touch and blackmail her. If she ever broke something in the house, for example, while she was growing up, mother would always forgive him in the end Though, I suspect this is why she put up with her ex. She ended up moving away to her grandmother's house, which became her, her new mom. She seemed to have left it all in the past and got everything put together, telling me how effed up her mother's relationship was, how stupid she was putting up with her ex, etc. I ended up getting really attached and also opening up to her after countless meaningless no-commitment relationships. Anyways, I got a hold of her smartphone and found she was seeing her ex behind my back, along with weeks of messages exchanged through which you could clearly see she was still crazy about him and he was still a scumbag, realized she was not really emotionally stable. Ended up telling her I found out and we were done. I went no contact, blocked her from all social media and ignored her all her several phone calls and text messages. I had no intention of having that kind of drama in my life. Good, good for you, man. She gave up after a month. This was two months ago. Yesterday, she called me from another phone. I immediately hung up after hearing her voice. Called several times more than finally messaged telling me her grandmother was in a coma for the past two weeks and the doctors found a brain tumor. She probably doesn't have much longer. Her. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. And I just need to talk. Can we meet? I think I was one of the most emotional, stable times of her life. So I kind of understand why she's contacting me. After thinking for a bit, I reached the conclusion I really didn't want to meet, talk to her again. And I messaged her. Me. No. I'm really sorry for your grandmother, but I can't help you. Her, I just need to talk. I'm really sorry for everything. Please let me see you again. Me, no. Her, thank you for answering. I miss you. Take care. She ended up messaging me several more times apologizing for what she did. And if she could take it back, she would. For a bit, it seemed like she wanted to talk more about us and what happened than about her grandmother. I finally blocked this number also. I still have no intention of ever getting back together, but I do feel bad for her grandmother, which was probably the only other thing emotionally stable in her life for how effed up this can potentially be for her head. Am I being an a-hole for not talking to her? Not even via text? To sum everything up, X cheated on me with her ex. I went 100% no contact with no intention to ever communicate with her again. Now her grandmother is dying. 
She wants to talk meat and I feel bad. Wow. Let me give my thoughts. You are not a bad person, sir. You here. Here's think about this. She contacted you saying her grandmother is in a coma, blah, blah, you know, whatever, whatever. But you guys ended up talking about your relationship and how sorry she was. Come on. Come on. She's trying to get back with you. <laughs> she has no one. You know, she's losing somebody who was important to her in her life. And I agree with you. That's that is sad. I, I would feel bad for her, too. Like you, you know, but you can't come running to me and use me up. And use me as an emotional tampon and dump me and go back to your boyfriend who you're addicted to, this crazy guy. And you were putting in 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 the in the in the post, you know, you were naming, you were saying stuff about her past and everything. You were saying red flag, red flag. Hey, when you see those red flags, you gotta step back, man. <laughs> you gotta step back. You know, but uh you did it anyway. But I love how you found out like, oh, oh, I tried to give you a chance, but you were playing around. It's over. You st you wiped your hands clean and you went no contact. That's how you do it. And she went out of her way, like most will, called you from another number. As soon as you heard her voice, click. Click. Nope. I want nothing to do with you, ma'am. It's over. Now she's texting from this weird number and she, she's trying to, she's using what happened to her grandmother to get in good with you. Don't let her do you, you. You do not let them do that. Oh, the dog died. Oh, like it could be anything. My friend just went to jail. Like just anything, anything that use anything. No, no, you're not the sucker. She thinks you are. Let's check out these comments. I think you did that perfectly. You were a gentleman by answering her call and giving her your condolences, but she needs to turn for comfort elsewhere. Yep. I bet if you gave, I bet if you gave in, she'd wheedle her way back into your life and history would repeat itself. Yep. You guys know. Someone said I giggled at wheedle. Yeah, that is uh, interesting. This people who crawl their way back in your life tend to go back to their old habits once they feel safe again. Yep. Here's OP. Thank you. <laughs> she has clearly sold you all sorts of sob stories about her life and manipulated you through pity. Yep. And I made that mistake. I stayed with someone out of pity. Not, don't ever, ever, ever do nothing like that. Because as soon as they get the opportunity, they'll turn their back on you. Give you all these sad stories. and uh, This is just more of the same. No, I keep no contact. Here's OP. Your reply really made me wonder what else were lies. Even after founding out she cheated, I never looked back at them. Thank you. Are you sure she isn't just lying about her grandmother just as an excuse to reestablish contact? Haha, <laughs> are you my best friend? The first thing he said was, you're going to fall for the old my granny is dying bullcrap thingy. <laughs> I didn't think that, but I, see, I like to think that when people, people aren't that evil, are they? But yeah not you think about it people are people would say some crazy stuff like that people will stay some say say some crazy stuff like that don't it's not the ex's job to do crap like this move on move on thank you you feel bad because someone is dying that feeling is real and she is trying to manipulate you into becoming a provider for her again of emotional support stay the course she will just hurt you more. You'll find out if you two start talking that she's dating the other guy or effing random dudes. Here's OP. I'm staying the course. Oh, here we go. As bad as you feel for her right now, letting her use you as an emotional tampon with indications of possible reconciliation to draw you back in remanipulation will most likely lead to more pain and agony for you down the road with this chick. And someone said emotional tampon. And here's OP emotional tampon. That is a great way to put it. Thank you. <laughs> it is, man. I like that, man. I think I, I think I first heard that 
Let me see. Let me get it right. I want to say it was Coach Greg Adams. I heard that years ago. I heard him say that before. Um, and when I first heard it, when I first heard that, I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. That's that's crazy. I like that. Um, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'll catch you guys at the next one. Reddit cheating stories. She lied from the start before telling me all about her betrayal on New Year's Day. Wow. We met on the Facebook dating app a month ago. I was looking for a long-term relationship, as was I. She told me how her husband had died a few months prior from the virus and, and was in a coma for two months before that. Oh, man. She said her mother-in-law had taken custody of her two boys because she had a mental breakdown when she learned her husband wasn't going to wake up. I didn't go into detail, but it was implied that she was admitted for a short time to a mental institution. These are all very red flags, but she seemed very genuine and I really felt for her. I looked at her and I saw a person in desperate need for a win. She said her best friend from childhood whom she called her sister, had just died in a car accident, as well around the time her husband had died. It really seemed like the world was absolutely coming down on her. I treated her to dinners, movies, and lended her an ear whenever she needed someone to talk to, which was many hours of every day. She lives with an older guy, a guy that owns a home locally that she and her husband had roomed with prior to his death. The roommate, as she affectionately referred to him as, was 50 plus year old dialysis patient. For reference, I am 30 and she is 27. The one time I met him, he talked over her for nearly two hours, as if I was there to get to know him. Hmm. Told me all about his dialysis and how he believes he has about four years left to live which I was sympathetic to. But during the whole interaction, he was very rude about my date's late husband, calling him a control freak and just speaking ill of the dead pretty blatantly, which clearly made my date uncomfortable. I steered the conversation away and the roommate took the hint, leaving us alone for the rest of the date. Around 10 p.m., I was kissing my date goodnight, which turned into a brief makeout session. The roommate, upon hearing our smacking, walked into the kitchen, grabbed a bag of cookies and threw them at my date as hard as he could. I deflected the bag and said, what the F, dude? Not throw crap at her. He responded, I think it's time we cut this little date short. Everyone has to work tomorrow. It was pretty difficult not to raise my voice further, but she pulled me outside. As we stood on the porch, she spotted him staring at us and closed the door. She said he was protective after everything that had happened to her. I left with an awful taste in my mouth. She later texted me that he had felt disrespected by our actions because he had admitted earlier to having feelings for her. <laughs> Yo, what in the world? This was a lot. In retrospect, I should have just I should have just walked away then and there. Uh yeah. But I continued to be the one she could talk to. I encouraged her to be careful with someone willing to throw things at her. I promised to call if anything got out of hand. She texted me later that her mother-in-law was accusing her roommate of claiming her and her two children on his taxes, which really upset her. She said she felt betrayed by her roommate after helping care for him during his dialysis treatments. But she had nowhere else to go. She was asking if I wanted to hang out on New Year's Day, which would be our third date. I agreed and was asking if she had plans for the 31st. She and an old female friend of hers were going to Atlanta to get drinks and have fun. I knew there would be dancing with other guys and flirting, but I'm not really bothered by the night scene. I had done a bit of harmless flirting with other girls since she and I had been talking too. And I figured a night of drinks and fun would be good for her. Anyway, with all that already gone down. And anything that got her away from her weird old roommate was a good press for me. He called me at 11 on New Year's Day. 
I was still asleep. I woke up at noon and went to pick her up. When I picked her up, she seemed a little tired, but seemed happy to see me. We had planned a day at my place watching movies on my couch. Moments after arriving at my house, things got hot and steamy. We spent around three of the five hours getting it in, including me, including me going down multiple times. We cuddled and talked about the future and what we planned to do. We had previously made the relationship official, but agreed not to advertise it on social media so her mother-in-law wouldn't use it to keep her kids from her any longer. Dude, the red flags on this chick. I dropped her off and came home with a smile and enjoyed the fact that I had finally found someone worth fighting for. Then, I get a text message. It's her. I need to tell you the truth. Oh, wow. After you didn't had your mouth. Man, you guys better be careful out here. My roommate and I are friends with benefits. We went to a uh, swingers club last night. And we did some things while I was waiting on you to pick me up today. That's why I was so tired. We didn't get in till around 8. I'll spare you the exact text that followed, but I was totally floored. She went on to express hopes that she could keep seeing me in spite of this revelation. And I told her we were done. I really have no idea how much of what she told me was even true. I can't believe I was so blind. Was a single effing thing she said true? Is this even a cheating? Is this even a cheating story? What the f just happened to me? Wow. Let me give my thoughts. Guys, if you meet somebody, if you guys still want to try serious relationships, things like that. You meet somebody and she's telling you how she's going through so much. Red flag. Walk away. Walk away. It ain't worth it. Don't try to save someone. Oh, you've been so down. Let me pick you up out of this rut you've been in. Oh, let me help you. Dude, everything she told you probably was a lie. Everything she told you probably was a lie. Yeah, her husband probably did pass. What did he really pass from, though? They're, they're going around to these clubs, and she's messing with this guy, and this guy is... No. Guys? <laughs> Seriously, come on, man. Yeah, the red flags were there. And you did that to her? You had your mouth all over her? Dude. Hmm. Hmm. Dude, go get checked and never, ever do anything like this again. Seriously. I want to see if he's in the comments. Guys, let's check out the comments. Someone said, wow, if what you wrote is true from your end, that's a heck of a story. And the OP replies and says, I guess it is. I'm not real sure what to make of, of any of this. It seems like she just came over to get D down one last time and accept the Christmas gift I got for her before letting me know she was feeding me lies for the last month. Wow. Someone said, I would totally recommend to do an STD test ASAP. She is dangerous. Absolutely. Absolutely. Someone said, for sure do this as well as block her and move on with your life as she is too broken to fix without professional help. Yep. Someone said, man, I don't want to be rude, but you knew better. You had to. You had to. There were a billion blood red flags throughout this entire post. OP says, I mean, that's a fair point. I felt like an idiot afterwards. I've never been manipulated by someone that legit just lost someone so close to them before. I felt sorry for her and had clouded judgment. That's on me. Oh, wow. Somebody said, what if he found her phone and sent that message? Ooh, plot twist. 
let's be honest, that could pos- the way the old man was acting, that could be true. He could have been telling the truth or he could have been lying. But I'm sorry, from the beginning of the story, like she, anybody to me, you're telling me all these issues you're having. Get away from me. But someone asked that question and the OP said, that's unfortunately not the case. The conversation that followed that text was clearly written in her mannerisms, same as spellings and all. Yeah. Dude, go get tested. Go make sure you're good and get out of that. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. You're done with her. Nine. What happened when I left my husband for my boss? Hmm. Hmm. You always think what you have, what you're going through is different. I'll say that about affairs. Before you embark on one of your own, you laugh whenever you hear stories of He said he was going to leave his wife for me, or he said he was going to marry me. But before you know it, you're the one saying those things. And the sad thing is, you really believe those words to be true. I'd been married to my husband, Tom, for six years when I took a job as an EA at a finance firm to help pay for our gargantuan mortgage. Tom and I had been talking about starting a family but felt our financial situation was too precarious, so we kept putting it off. There's a part of me today that wonders whether one of us, or perhaps even both of us, secretly knew our marriage wasn't going to work out. But you can drive yourself crazy thinking about such things. There's no denying my new boss Steve was an attractive man, but my first thought when I met him was, thank God, He seemed nice and I felt I could do with some nice after the last ogre I worked for. Steve seemed relaxed, not overly concerning himself with how I conducted myself, as long as I got what he needed done. During our first conversations, I discovered he was married to his second wife and had four children, two little ones with his current wife, and two teenagers with his first wife. He had framed photos of his wife and kids all over his office. It seemed like he had the perfect life, but as I later found out, I had it all wrong. My relationship with Steve for the first few months was purely professional. We would only ever speak in the office, and when we did, it was only ever about work stuff. But then slowly things began to change. The changes were so small. In fact, that I didn't even notice anything was different until I was head over heels. Mm-hmm, sure. Sure. What were the changes? You know, just little things. Calling the office from his mobile to ask about flight details, but then quickly moving into onto friendly chats that were in no way work-related. Changes like grabbing the odd coffee together or a quick drink after work. By the time we received our invitations for the company Christmas party, I realized I felt conflicted, oscillating wildly between hoping he'd kiss me on the night and trying to think of reasons why I couldn't attend. I knew my marriage was over the minute Steve kissed me in the cab on the way to the after party. Wow. I was so under his spell that I didn't even think to stop and try to fight for my marriage in the weeks after the party. But Steve was an altogether different breed. Scarred by his first divorce, he wasn't thrilled about setting himself up for another legal battle. So began months of secretly seeing each other whenever we could. There were lots of bogus work trips away where we wouldn't get out of bed all day. There were lots of bogus work trips and plenty of steamy meetings in the boardrooms and car parts. It was exciting, but we both felt racked with guilt over what we were doing to our partners. It was clear to me that we'd have to make a decision, but Steve wasn't so sure, preferring to have his cake and eat it too. What a prick. Still, I guess the writing was on the wall. As months went on, things at home deteriorated for me, I didn't want to keep lying to Tom, but Steve refused to make the leap with me. I begged him to leave his wife, promising that I too would leave my husband, 
and we could start a new life together. But every conversation quickly escalated into a huge fight. In time, most of our hotel room sessions were filled with us screaming at each other. We went back and forth like this for months, increasingly arguing in our cars or in his office. I later found out everyone knew we were having an affair. But in the end, we finally agreed. On the same day, we both went home and told our respective spouses that we'd fallen in love with someone else and that we were leaving. Maybe it's because we didn't have any children together, but my husband took the news a lot better than Steve's wife. We immediately began using the kids as pawns. As part of our bid for a new life, we both sought and accepted new jobs in our states, with the understanding that Steve would fly back on weekends to spend them with his kids. I thought if we got away from the gossip and the social alienation, most of our friends and both families turned on us, things would be okay. I was kidding myself. He found it difficult being away from his children, and I suffered having him away so often. The arguments began to increase once more, but they were nothing compared to the resentment that was building in both of us. He resented me for destroying his family, and I resented Steve for promising a life he couldn't quite deliver. A few months in, Steve came home to tell me he was going back to his wife. He'd been secretly having counseling sessions with <laughs> He'd been secretly having counseling sessions with her while he was back in Melbourne, and they decided to give it another go. The devastation didn't let me go for years. I left my whole life behind in Melbourne to start a new one in Sydney where I didn't know anyone. Suddenly I found myself single, alone, and on the cusp of a divorce with someone who truly didn't deserve what I'd put him through. Wow. That was bad enough, but the mental damage was the worst of it. It took me years before I could open myself up to someone else, and even though I'm now married with children of my own. I don't know that I've recovered from Steve. Sometimes I hear of younger colleagues telling me the same old story. Oh, I've fallen in love and we're going to run away together. And I have, a, and I have to bite my tongue. Everyone has to learn from their own mistakes. But I also know they wouldn't listen to me anyway. I know I certainly wouldn't have because my story was different. Names have been changed. Wow, let me give my thoughts. That's what you get. <laughs> That's what you get. You know, um, you know, of course, it would have been very satisfying to read. Let's see that part where she said you were alone in Melbourne, single, all by yourself. Gary P left you and you had left a great guy. You know, what's sad. She finally realized how great of a guy she already had when the AP left. When the, when the AP was gone, she was like, oh man, now I'm alone. The AP, the, her her ex-husband could have called her up at that very moment and said, babe, I know you left me or whatever, but let's just work this out. She would have jumped on the first, t first plane she could book. Went right back home. Selfish. It's selfishness. It's all it is. It's having that that great thing, but you see something better. It's just like the, the toy analogy. You know, having that shiny toy and then a shinier one come. How did how did that toy out outdo this toy that I own? I want that one. Screw this toy. And that's all it is. It's all it is. It's what she wanted at the time. Unfortunately, she found someone to marry her and have a family with her and um honestly she would do the same thing to that the man she's with now it's just who she is that's ridiculous or may, maybe it's a possibility she learned her lesson i'll never leave a good guy again screw that it's not worth it she might i don't know maybe she did but um man guys let me know what you think about this in the comments wow she thought the grass was greener on the other side and realized it wasn't. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments and I will catch you guys at the next one.